His Excellency, Mr. Elwood Williams, former president of Dominica and vice president of the DAIC. Honorable Senator Robert Tong, Minister for Tourism and Urban Renewal. The Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas, former prime minister and leader of the opposition in the Federation of St. Kitts and Nevis and our special guest speaker here today. Mrs. Esther Thomas, permanent secretary, Ministry of Commerce, Enterprise and Small Business Development. Ms. Karine Prevo, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Tourism and Urban Renewal. Mr. Harold Geist, Permanent Secretary, Ministry of Agriculture and Fisheries. The DAIC Board of Directors, DAIC members who make these events possible naturally. Our partner, BSOs, other invited guests, the media houses as well. Thank you for being here. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. An international airport in a small island developing state. It's not easy, but it's possible. There is a lot of work involved, not just to make it happen, but more importantly, ensuring its sustainability. Today, we are very privileged to have the Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas here with us to speak on his experience with the Robert L. Bradshaw International Airport in St. Kitts. Who better to guide us, being versed in the pros and cons of such a venture and its role as a development strategy? The debate is a well-discussed topic, not just for Dominica. Recently, we welcomed the Argyle International Airport St. Vincent to our OECS Air Access Development and have all read or heard of the challenges faced by our sister island in her venture. If we look closer at the parameters involved in establishing an international airport and the sustainability of these investments, three questions immediately come to mind. Location, cost, and of course, justification to the airlines. Across the islands, who each share topographical challenges, location is probably one of the most difficult to answer. Grenada, when building Morris Bishop International Airport, reclaimed land and built across Hardley Bay along the southern tip of the island, backfilling mangroves and swamplands. This was in the 1980s. Today, we have a greater awareness of our environment and the impact our actions, if not considered carefully, can cause. For us, it is even harder than what was before. Finding a location in Dominica factors in every discussion related to air access. The Northeast Coast has been cited as the most appropriate location. Questions do arise. Economically, will this pose a challenge being positioned away from the economic hub? Are there environmental questions to be answered? From a business perspective, will there be a justifying increase in the inflow of foreign capital from tourist visits? Will there be more tourist visits? Argyle International Airport on the east coast of the island of St. Vincent has completed construction of and successfully opened its new airport on February 14th of this year. Dr. Denzel Douglas himself was there for that opening. Costs to build and costs to come with sustaining of the facility will need to be realized through increases in traffic and revenue. The management of an airport already tests profitability. A small airport even more so. Operational costs, for example, your equipment factored in with handling and other related expenses must see a steady inflow of an increase in revenue to be sustainable. This brings us to our traffic. Who and what? Opportunities do arise, however, with the questions on airline expectations. Developments underway and hopefully, if guided well, new ventures to meet hotel capacity expectations of the airlines will add not just to the tourism product, but to the spin-off effect on the economy if managed well. Is our infrastructure in place? In the case of Grenada, a seat commitment was offered to guarantee the necessity of the airlines. Basically, government guaranteed air airlines a certain minimum passenger load coming in. We had to sell it in Grenada. If the airline carried less than that minimum, then government paid the airline the difference between the minimum load guarantee and the actual number that was carried, and if the number was less than the minimum guarantee. Rather than recreate the wheel, looking at existing markets can help drive the direction for engaging the relevant corridors and choosing the right providers. Basically, where are our numbers to come from, and do we have places for them to stay? 
Here is a conundrum. Do we build an airport in the hope that we can stimulate travel to Dominica and an expansion into our tourism industry? Or do we, can we, develop the infrastructure in hope one day of justifying an airport? Or do we just go along as before? The construction of an international airport has been subject of much talk, political promise, and controversy. Can we rely on the hub and spoke concept? Is it important not just for economic development, but for national identity? Currently, the development of our infrastructure relies on connecting airline routing. Should our future be dependent or reliant on regional air access routes, or should we forge our own identity as a nation in taking a significant risk in developing our own air access, direct air access? Whether one is needed or not is not for you to decide today. But we do hope to stimulate more thought on viability and sustainability of an international airport. This is why we sought to engage our guest speaker, Dr. Denzel Douglas, to talk on the St. Kitts experience. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming the Right Honorable Dr. Denzel Douglas. I'm very pleased to be in beautiful Dominica at this time. I should emphasize, however, that St. Kitts is very striking, but there is no denying the special appeal of Dominica and the reasons why it is universally seen as the nature isle. I want to thank the Association of Industry and Commerce for inviting me to address you today. The topic I emphasize is one with which sooner or later, small states everywhere find themselves contending. We in St. Kitts and Nevis contended with this matter as early as 1972, when the decision was taken at that same time to build two hotels by the government, one of the main hotels being in the Frigate Bay area, the Jacta Hotel at that time, it was called the Royal St. Kitts um, Hotel, and also a downtown hotel in Bastia called the Fort Thomas Hotel, which at that time was branded by Holiday Inn. I emphasize as well that it was at a time when the decision was taken by the St. Kitts government to bring home to the Eastern Caribbean, specifically in St. Kitts, the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank at that time called the Eastern Caribbean Currency Authority. I make mention of this because back in 1972, you would recall that sugar agriculture was the mainstay of the economy of St. Kitts and Nevis. And Robert Llewellyn Bradshaw, Sir, Sir Robert, our first national hero, with his own erstwhile friend and longtime partner, also national hero now, Sir Caleb Azariah Paul Southwell, who himself was a Dominican, as you would recall, and who at that time was holding the portfolio or portfolios of Deputy Prime Minister, or Deputy Premier, I should say, and also Minister of Tourism, Industry, and Trade, had taken a specific decision to begin to diversify the economy of St. Kitts and Nevis. It was clearly felt that no longer would we be able to sustain the economic development and the social and political development of St. Kitts and Nevis with merely depending upon sugar agriculture, the monoculture of the time. And so the airport became a central plank in the economic development strategy of St. Kitts and Nevis all the way back in 1972. If you examine the pillars of the economy today, you will realize that it is now a services economy with tourism and hospitality being the 
leading services um, sector, supported, of course, by offshore education, international financial services, and information communication technology services. But there is still some dependence on light manufacturing, especially with regard to the um, electronic enclave industry that we have in St. Kitts and Nevis, where e-lift is also very critical as an important factor. And there is still diversified agriculture, mainly sustaining small farming development and meeting our own demands locally at home. And so I, I, I make the point with that introduction that there is no denying the fact that an international airport opens the country to opportunities and to conveniences that would never exist in the absence of such a facility. At the same time, however, airport construction tends to be tremendously expensive under the best of circumstances. And this is particularly so in countries like Dominica, where a complete rearrangement of nature's carefully placed topography would be required. What this does tell us, ladies and gentlemen, is that whether an international airport should be constructed in Dominica, when an airport should be constructed in Dominica, and under what circumstances an airport should be constructed in Dominica, need to be the focus of a broad-based and in-depth process of national consultation. Should the consensus be that the interest of Dominica would be best served by the construction of an international airport, my experience with massive infrastructural projects tells me that an undertaking of this magnitude with the benefits so widely dispersed throughout the entire society would be best move forward as a public-private sector partnership. Business persons being able to travel to major metropolitan centers easily, students being able to travel overseas, prospective business partners being able to readily access Dominica from point farther afield, vital inputs being able to get to Dominica in a timely manner, Dominica's exports being able to get to market without delay, greater, venue, greater revenue streams for your hoteliers and tour operators. These are just some members of the broad-based pool that would benefit from the introduction of international e-links in your country. And it is because of this broad-based sharing of the benefits that a public-private partnership where costs are concerned would be most essential. Direct air access between Dominica and the key metropolitan centers has until now, we know, been made difficult by your very mountainous terrain. Indeed, Constructing airport facilities that can handle long-haul flights by international airlines will be extremely costly and would likely require, as was the experience in St. Vincent, the leveling of hills and the filling of valleys, in other words, a complete restructuring of nature's carefully constructed topography. In St. Kitts and Nevis' experience back in 1972, we were still not an independent country. We were getting some granting aid from Great Britain. That, of course, is more difficult to expect today. As you would see from the experience of St. Vincent, 
neither the Caribbean Development Bank nor the um, World Bank came to the assistance of the people of um, St. Vincent. And so times have changed. And it is therefore considered to be important that we see in Dominica, it will become, of course, a financial challenge. But there's no denying the relationship between the availability of international travelers to any particular country. Indeed, the Caribbean Tourism Organization statistics show that Martinique and Guadeloupe, for example, enjoy some of the largest air travel numbers in the Caribbean, driven by their links to metropolitan France. There therefore remains considerable upside potential for Dominica to take its place as a prime Caribbean tourism destination in the event that direct international air service becomes available. And in the event that this is even what Dominica wants. No other island possesses the rugged natural beauty, both onshore and offshore, which Dominica has. Your attractions include a boiling lake, I'm told, several world-class nature trails, outstanding world-class diving, a rich and unique terrestrial biodiversity, whale watching, the Caribbean's own indigenous Kalinago community, UNESCO World Heritage Sites, and numerous historical sites encompassing both regions, both the regions pre-Columbus era and its more recent colonial heritage. Your fusion of African, English, and French culture, exemplified in your rich musical and dance traditions, seen in your annual carnival and world creole music festival, only adds to your country's wonderful traveler possibilities. And your food is itself a reason to travel to Dominica, presenting fresh and organic cuisine in a blend of Caribbean, French, and international flavors. The list of what makes Dominica a unique destination, as you know even more than me, can go on and on. You have all the assets to place you as a leading Caribbean destination, but only you would know the extent to which this is compatible with your unique standing as the Nature Isle, or whether this is the direction in which, in, in which you even wish to go. Permit me to add also that while your tourism infrastructure may be in its infancy in some respects, it is at the top of its game in other respects. As we highlighted last year when, C when CNN ranked Dominica's Secret Bay Hotel as the number one boutique in the world for 2016. The accolades cannot be any louder than that for trumpeting the strength of the amazing and unique tourism product that Dominica has to offer. But in the final analysis, the crucial questions have to resolve, has, have to revolve, sorry, around what best suits the interest of Dominica. Is it the status quo? an airport designed to accommodate what I call mid-sized jets, one compatible of accommodating huge commercial aircraft. If Dominica wished to attract greater numbers of travelers, we already know that the sheer challenge for the international traveler in getting to this beautiful island means that only the most determined will probably visit your unique and beautiful country. Meanwhile, the competition is fierce. 
fares for that tourism dollar as it is equally fares for that, for that niche ecotourism experience which Dominica presents. In today's increasingly competitive tourism market, the aim is to make the travel experience as seamless and accessible as possible. That was the experience that we've had in St. Kitts, even after we've had a number of hotels on the ground. And central to this is direct ear access. And the experience of St. Kitts is particularly instructive in this regard. The phenomenal growth in stayover visitors into St. Kitts over the past 10 years has been made possible by a number of factors, but I advise today that central to which has been the availability of direct international services out of the US and more recently out of the UK markets. Doing this involved the upgrading and expansion of aviation facilities because, you see, we wanted to provide an airport that could cater to the demands of the international traveler. In fact, after we became very much engaged in the Citizenship by Investment program, very many visitors from all over the world, China, from the Middle East, from Europe, wanted to get to their new home their new home that they had become citizens of very quickly. Considerable sums, therefore, were therefore expended in that effort over the years to ensure that people were able to get into our country as an international traveler very quickly. And this was essential to maintain the direct air links that were required for establishing St. Kitts as a world-class destination, something which we were able to do in a remarkably short period of time. The benefits associated with direct ear links, they are well. Not only are there the traveler benefits, but Dominica remains one of the region's primary agricultural producers. Direct access, therefore, would enable Dominica's farmers and agro-processors to tap into a global market, increasingly seeking the type of exotic organic produce that Dominica is already able to produce. The ability to provide same day and next day shipments to the US and other ports can only be a stimulus for your agricultural sector and the wider community. That is why today, St. Kitts and Nevis remains one of the few countries that still has a reliable manufacturing enclave, no less than 15 to 20% of our GDP. Because the electronic parts that are assembled, they are not only being flown into the United States market and into Europe, Germany, and France in particular, but also now into the Brazilian market that we've been able to sustain because of a direct international trade agreement that we've established with the Brazilians. Expanded trade ties are also another direct benefit of an international air connection with the prospect for low transportation costs and therefore prices to the Dominica consumer. And added to these would be the very clear benefit of the large Dominica diaspora based all over the world, in particularly North America and the United Kingdom, being able to return home at will. This in itself has its own positive and social and economic spin-offs. When all is said and done, however, 
Despite the many clear advantages just outlined, it is the fact that the cost which we had to bear in St. Kitts in order to have direct international airlift were minuscule compared to the expenditures and the efforts that will be required in the case of Dominica. I should add here that it was as a result of the success of our own citizenship by investment program, especially the Sugar Industry Diversification Foundation, that we were able to guarantee direct airlift by American Airlines, no less than three times per week, out of Miami and out, daily out of Miami, I should say, and twice per week out of, um, out of New York as a result of lending support to the build-up of airlift, the reliability of airlift to ensure that the airlines would come. And we knew that once they would come with the expanding hotel capacity, hotel room capacity, it would become a matter of convenience and a matter that is normal. And so should Dominica decide to move forward, with an international airport, substantial international support will be needed, as was the case in St. Vincent, for example. In addition, there would have to be a concerted national commitment at the highest levels to the success of the project because unforeseeable contingencies can and will emerge, significantly complicating the effort and making the challenge even greater than it already was. In the case of St. Vincent, many obstacles have to be overcome, including natural disasters and the global financial crisis. Permit me to stress, ladies and gentlemen, how very crucial it is that only the highest levels of technical expertise be relied upon. First, there must be a high caliber undertaking to analyze and assess the viability, the viability of any such project. There would also need to be the requisite economic and financial analyses to ensure that Dominica puts in place infrastructure that is economically viable and is flexible enough to respond to changes in technology and other end uses in some of the world's most dynamic environments, that is tourism and aviation industries. Fortunately, there is international assistance to be sourced through various national, regional, and international aviation agencies and this resource is often invaluable in preventing costly project overruns and long-term inefficiencies in what is an extremely technical and highly regulated sector from our experiences. Incidentally, I must add, we are having this conversation today just a few days after the Eastern Caribbean Central Bank hosted a growth and employment forum between members of the Monetary Council and social and development partners of the Eastern Caribbean Currency Union. Certain goals were set for the currency union countries in that forum to be achieved no longer than the year 2025. What are these goals? We have been told that if we are to really sustain the economic development of the region and advance our people socially and otherwise, we need to have in the region a 5% growth rate. We need to ensure that our competitiveness would rank less than 50 in international scaling. 
And we needed also to ensure that by 2025, we would be able to have no less than 60,000 new jobs in this particular period. And so today here in Dominica, as we chew on the prospect of an international airport as part of your own development thrust to achieve your own goals within the framework of what I have just described as the framework for the currency union of the Eastern Caribbean. It is time that we ask yourselves, or you ask yourselves, I should say, whither Dominica in the scheme of things. All indications are that Dominica's development prospects are favorable. Its tourism continues to expand carrying brand Dominica to an even wider audience. The type of green tourism which Dominica provides is becoming increasingly sought after in a world more and more seeking organic and healthier lifestyles. Progress in the agricultural sector is on the way as Dominica continues to diversify its own agricultural base and plans for the opening of international chain hotel, the Kempinski brand will further add to Dominica's position in the marketplace. Is therefore your international airport going to assist you to achieve these specific goals that I have just mentioned, which were discussed in Bastia St. Kitts just a few days ago. Hence, I would say that your international airport must go hand in hand with hotel room construction and airlift development if it is to be a sustainable tool for your economic and social and political development as well. We in St. Kitts, we renovated and we expanded our airport based on projected tourism demands and our own ability to attract new airlift. With Kempinski, you would need to attract airlift. You would have additional hotels. And so the formula, in my opinion, is already being worked out. It is very difficult for a small population to support international airlift. But a small country like Dominica, like St. Kitts and Nevis and St. Vincent, must see airlift and airport improvement as an investment in its own economic expansion. Hence, Dominica's time has come. What is needed, however, at the time of Dominica's choosing, it has to be a conversation. Indeed, many conversations at the national level as to the cost and the benefits, the advantages and the disadvantages to Dominica. Of course, an undertaking as massive as the construction of an international airport. There is no answer that fits all circumstances or all countries. No, there is not. Through in-depth analysis and extended meaningful national dialogue, the people of Dominica, I am certain, have been heard from a wide range of individuals like myself, will decide using their own unique judgment and the interest that are best known by them, the correct path at the correct time. And that is exactly what it should be. I thank you.